Hello, this is Steph. Today we're going to see the newest thing that is here around. So, uh, FMPEG 6 has been released. So we're going to see what's the difference between the previous version and this version. Let's see. Um, so there are some improvements. So let's see if there are some uh, different things. Uh, we saw something in a short that I published last week, but now we're going to see uh, something more practical, more in detail. So at the moment, uh, we are already behind. Uh, we are going to use uh, the Windows version. The same thing might be done in the Linux version. So um, we are uh, using Windows. Two things that are comparable. Um, so we can get started. Let's get started. Okay, here we are. Here we have uh, above me the older version. Uh, so the older official 5.1.2. And uh, for the people who are following for a long time, this is the one that we used for all the time, basically. And uh, here on the top right, there is uh, the FMPEG 6.0. Uh, the FMPEG 6.0 is uh, the current official. And uh, uh, let's see what are the differences. So first of all, what I would like to uh, do is uh, to take a look at uh, the change log. And here everything is written. So let me move myself on the right side to read a bit better. And uh, here, what do we have? Uh, we have plenty of things, something that uh, um, so for, for me, for the way I use FMPEG might be a bit minor, but uh, uh, so maybe for you that uh, you're using FMPEG for other users, uh, it can be useful. So what is useful here for me is a DDA grab and uh, also uh, a new improvement of the FMPEG command line. So in this case, uh, if you would like to... Uh, so there is the multi-threading of uh, uh, every process that is going on in FMPEG. Um, so there is uh, every mooxer in a separate thread, so this should uh, increase uh, the performance. This is something that uh, wasn't new. So for the people who followed the FOSTEM 2023, uh, it was the beginning of February 2023. There was a Jean Baptiste Kempf that uh, talked about the FMPEG, and uh, these are the changes. So uh, there is uh, some hardware change, AV1 hardware decoding for Intel, Nvidia, and AMD. And uh, there is a high bit depth and chroma resolution pixel formats uh, that uh, rendered. Android Media Codec through NDK Media Codec, uh, Android Media Codec encoders, and uh, also uh, Intel 10, 12 bit, 422, and 444 with the VAAPI, API, sorry, and the QSV plus filters. And as codecs, you have you have a lot of other codecs, new filters, ADRC. Let's see what they're doing. AF, AF delay SR, uh, so, uh, show uh, CWT, A3D scope, uh, SSIM 360, core, and background key. There is a DTS to PTS B3 stream filter to generate the timestamps for RAW H264, uh, extensible also to other codecs. And this can be uh, a very good advantage. Let's have a look and how it works. There is also another thing to take in consideration. That is uh, the schedule, the plan for the releases of FMPEG. So um, this was uh, introduced in version 5. Uh, so we have uh, uh, a thing that will be more schedules, let's say with uh, an official version the 6.0, for example, this year, that uh, it was said to be in January, but uh, it came out uh, on February, so nothing to um, end of February, but uh, no worries, it's uh, it's normal for uh, things so big like this. So 
6.0 for January. Then at the middle of the year, July, but can be also August. We don't uh, delay, so we don't um, want to put too much of a hurry in this. Uh, there's a version 6.1. And then the next year, uh, January 2024, uh, the 7.0, uh, what they want to do is uh, to put uh, an LTS every couple of years. So July 2022, there is the version 5.1, which is uh, uh, an LTS. The next LTS will be in uh, July, so in the middle of uh, 2024, with another LTS and should stay for a couple of years while the normal versions will be maintained uh, for a year. So normal version, one year, LTS, two years. Okay, so first thing that we can use uh, out of the new version of FMPEG is uh, the so-called DDA grab. What is the DDA grab? The DDA grab is that way of uh, recording the screen by using the um, official API, so the desktop duplication API. This is something that uh, what is available since Windows 8, if I'm not wrong. And um, so officially it was introduced also before, but it's working at not working. So let's find uh, the comment as it is uh, from the guide. I'll put uh, the link down in the description. So this is uh, the comment I think that we can take uh, is to use uh, another folder. Okay, and uh, videos. Okay. <clears throat> Let's put output.mp4. And I would like to put here as uh, not libx264, so via software. Let's put this time via hardware and be and here so we have uh, the index that is equal to one so it will record the second screen so this is the screen that we are going to see in this moment I have another screen um, that is uh, my main screen that is a uh, number zero frame rate 60 hardware download tells uh, to mm, take the street the um, frames uh, directly from the hardware in this case from the video card without uh, uh, passing through other things and then we have uh, the format BGRA so also the, um, the the transparency uh, so at least that is uh, what it should be um, okay hardware download yes, we said let's try with this uh, comment, I copy it so it will be exactly the one also for the other version. And here it says that there is no filter at all. If we use uh, um, FMPEG in the new version, you will see that uh, everything will be uh, captured and uh, we can close. Here, if we take a look at uh, the videos folder, you will see that okay we have big up big buck bunny that it will be the video we would like to take uh, as our test but here you see that uh, we recorded the video so this can be added uh, to the things that uh, we said also in the video regarding the screen capture so if you remember uh, i will put it here in the description but uh, this is a, a new tool in your toolbox if you would like to record the video from the screen okay so now the thing that we're going to check is uh, move myself a little bit on the left. Um, the type of encoder that hardware uh, that use the hardware. In this case, uh, I have uh, an NVIDIA card. So what I can do is uh, to list all my encoders. So I have to tag minus encoders. So here I have all the lists like this. So it's quite messy. But uh, if I make a fine STR. It should be the grab for Windows. Um, find STR NVENC, so the NVIDIA encoder. Here, as you can see, we have H.264 uh, and HEVC uh, NVIDIA encoder. 
if on the new version we take the encoders and we do the same thing we see that we have a new entry we have a AV1 NVENC so uh, the NVIDIA NVENC AV1 encoder if we take a look at uh, the encoder the AV1 in this case uh, we have uh, uh, quite some so we have the old software ones and we also do the same thing on the other side so as you can see uh, we had the software ones the uh, LibAOM that should be the association for for open media if I'm not wrong um, alliance for open media sorry then uh, we have uh, the uh, this one the IV1E that should be the one that is maintained uh, by uh, the ZIF XIPH encoder and uh, then there is uh, the lib uh, SV step one that should be for uh, this is the one provided by the video uh, technology so essentially Intel so these are the software ones but uh, there is also the support for the hardware ones so we have uh, Nvidia QSV should be for Intel Quick Sync but also um, something for AMD so for full hardware support for our, um, to our hardware using the AV1 so let's use it we have uh, uh, something like uh, Let's take a common like fmpeg minus i. Um, we take uh, the big buck bunny that we have in the videos folder. There we go. And uh, then we put uh, the CV, um, the one that is available here. So AV1 and the DNC. Uh, we make a, a stream copy of the audio, so in this case, uh, copy, and then uh, well, let's say we have the CRF equal to 30, and uh, then we have uh, the folder. Okay, we say. <clears throat> AV1 NVENC test.mkv. So you maintain the MKV, it should be reliable. Uh, here, okay, I don't have no capital devices. It seems like that my card is uh, not supported by the um, device, by FMPEG. Anyway, if you have a more modern card, uh, this could work. So this is uh, uh, something that you can use. Uh, I have to stick with the software, <laughs> sorry for that, but uh, you can use uh, the hardware if it is supported. So now, as a quick test, uh, we are trying to perform the same command on uh, the old version and the new version. On the old version and the new version, we are using uh, Big Buck Bunny, so this video that is uh, 12 seconds long, to Re-encode both the video and the audio with X264 using a CRF of 18, but uh, we can also um, use another CRF. It is the same on both, so we see which is the improvement in terms of output and in terms of uh, uh, performance. And I also have uh, the stopwatch ready. So here we are trying to. Uh, get the stopwatch ready and uh, run the comments. So I try to be as fast as I can. So here we go. And it took 10 seconds for the 5.1.2 to get uh, the audio. And uh, the video is in this case. Uh, uh, for uh, four megabytes more or less, 4,460 kilobytes. So now let's see the same thing with uh, 
this version of FMPEG, the new one. Here we are resetting and then we are going. So here we go. So here was a bit of delay and uh, it was less than 10 seconds and um, it was around nine seconds and uh, the audio the uh, video plus audio is of the same size so uh, there is a slight i think uh, performance um so better performance on the uh, version 6 let me do it again and uh, here we go Okay. <clears throat> so 8.87. Now let me do the same thing on the other side. And uh, here we go. Eight point ninety nine. So I think we are more or less there. We allow me the precision with which I'm doing this thing, and uh, so I got to be a bit more precise. Maybe I got to uh, take a program that calculates um, the times more precisely. But more or less, we are there as a performance. So this uh, got to, I think, take uh, maybe a longer video or more elaborate things, uh, since uh, if we want multiple mooksers so now the new improvement is that the mooksers there is a new mooksers for each thread so um the thing should be a bit more um manageable especially if you have a powerful cpus i guess also another thing that uh, we have is the the implementation of the fft and uh, the m uh, dct uh, that is a bit more uh so rewritten let's say so it should be uh, more efficient maybe and uh, there are some also numerous uh, bug fixes um, there is uh, also um, the introduction so a battle handling of the ICC profiles and improved uh, color space signaling so all things that maybe without better um, getting in can be uh, useful for you guys uh, at the moment uh, I don't have uh, any possibility to try it on the short run maybe with the next videos we'll see that there will be some improvements or something uh, better uh, I saw that in the past with FMPEG there were some issues with the mapping of the colors I don't know if you noticed this guys um, for example the skin of the people would become a bit uh, uh, more yellowish maybe this will be solved with these new versions, I don't know. Okay, a new field that we have in FMPEG is uh, the A3D scope. The A3D scope is uh, that filter that uh, shows you in 3D the um, depiction of the audio uh, present in a multimedia file. So we take the old uh, Big Buck Bunny and uh, the command is uh, FMPEG minus I input file. Then I will remind you, so I will re redirect you to the specs of the filter, but it is enough to be invoked as LAVFI uh, A3D scope. And then the name of the output video. So in this case, uh, we'll put the Big Buck Bunny A3D scope. And now it's creating the video. So we can use FF play to play the video and you will see that there is this uh, strange representation. Okay, so you see this representation. In this case, you can rotate it. You can use uh, the your page and roll to get this uh, in uh, other orientations. 
mm, as you want and uh, this can be a nice effect, a nice filter. So an interesting metric that has been introduced with this version of FMPEG is uh, the correlation. The correlation can be invoked uh, using the core field. So here if we have FMPEG minus I, here we've got to take two videos and uh, so we got to take two videos that must have the same resolution, the same pixel format uh, to work correctly. And uh, it assumes also that the two videos have the same uh, number of frames uh, which are compared one by one. So be careful about uh, this. This is uh, something that is uh, reasonable uh, since, uh, let me rename this file. Um, since uh, what we want to do, the correlation does a uh, um, comparison to check if uh, one video is uh, resulting as a, com a linear combination of, uh, uh, so of the other video. Uh, here we have uh, two videos that are the same. Uh, we took uh, uh, the original, the same Big Buck Bunny that we usually use, so minus I, this one. We take the other as uh, the re-encoded video. Here we took uh, a re-encoding using Libex264 with uh, a CRF of 15, so pretty good. Not identical, but pretty good. And so, yes, so I pressed uh, Enter too uh, quickly. And uh, the filter is LAVFI core with double R. Then minus F, minus F knob. Here we don't have to produce any output. Here it will give a message uh, with uh, the value of correlation. So now it's analyzing them. And you see that uh, the correlation is given the three channels of the Y of V. So with the average, the minimum, and the maximum. Correlation. So you see that uh, the maximum correlation is uh, quite similar. Here we have the correlation of 0 0.984. The U is very similar. The V is still similar. So just to make a bet, uh, so a correlation with uh, the file with itself, we should have everything at one. So let's try. So here the video is like this. And here you see that everything is at one as expected because the videos are identical. When the videos are identical, we should have a correlation of one. Also, if one is a direct linear combination with a second, for example, if we invert the colors, we should have a high correlation as well. Okay, so these are some of the novelties that we found out in the newest version of FMPEG. There is this and also something more. Some of the filters, I wasn't able to make them working as uh, I wanted. So the documentation is there and the list of filters is there. I tried, uh, but the input, uh, I don't see any differences from the input or the output. Uh, if you used it and so if you're using this kind of filters, please let me know, put a comment down below right here. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for reaching up to this point. If you uh, please uh, like, uh, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell uh, to get notified about uh, the next videos I'll be releasing. Uh, for the moment, uh, uh, thank you very much for everything. Thank you very much for your enthusiasm. And uh, see you next time with other videos regarding multimedia, but also much, much, much more. Ciao, ciao.